Today we're going to work on some predict the product problems for alkene reactions. In our first problem, we have a bromination reaction. And what happens here is first bromine reacts with the uh, with the alkene here, okay? Bromine is a reactive species. Carbon tetrachloride is just our solvent, so we don't need to do anything with that. But the first thing that happens is the bromine adds to the alkene to form a bromonium ion. So that's a three-membered ring with a Br+. Plus. Okay, that pushes the methyl back. And this intermediate gets attacked by the Br-. minus. That's formed in that first step. The Br- minus attacks the more substituted carbon. And because this is a backside attack, uh, it's going to cause inversion of stereochemistry. So because my leaving group, the bromonium ion, is a wedged bond, the second bromine has to come in as a dashed bond. So we describe this as anti-addition, anti-addition, and the two bromines are going to end up trans to each other. Now remember, we had a methyl group in, originally on this carbon, and so, oops, sorry, that's going to, if the bromine on that carbon comes in as a wedge, as a dash, that means that the methyl group gets pushed out as a wedge. So this is one product, and of course it doesn't matter which bromine is the wedge and which bromine is the dash, so we always want to indicate that this is racemic because we just formed a chiral product from an achiral starting material. So we can indicate that it's racemic, or we could say plus enantiomer or something like that. Okay, our next example is described as an oxymercuration. These first, this first step is called an oxymercuration step. The second step is called the demercuration or a reduction step. And the process, that two-step procedure, is going to break the pi bond and add two groups across the pi bond. It's going to be a hydration. It's going to add an H and an OH. And this reaction proceeds with Markovnikov addition, which means the hydrogen goes to the carbon with more hydrogens. And the OH goes to the more substituted carbon. Now, this is going to give us mixed stereochemistry, but in fact, uh, because we're not creating any new chiral centers in this example, since we're not creating new, any new chiral centers, there's actually no stereochemistry to show. This is a symmetrical molecule um, and has no chiral centers. And so if you want to draw the hydrogen, you could draw the hydrogen. That's fine. Or you could leave it off because it's just a line drawing. So we'll get this tertiary alcohol as our final product. Uh, in the next case, we have catalytic hydrogenation. So I have H2. Uh, again, we could always assume everything's in excess, but we've pointed it out here and palladium is going to be the metal catalyst that's needed. Okay, so we're going to break the pi bond, and we're going to add a hydrogen and a hydrogen across the pi bond. Uh, and this is going to occur with, uh, with a particular stereochemistry. We observe syn addition of the two hydrogens. That means they're going to add to the same face. So in the product, we need to show both those hydrogens as coming from the same face. So in other words, they can both be drawn as wedges, or they could both be drawn as dashes, uh, but if hydrogens come in as the uh, as wedges, then that means it's going to push the alkyl groups that are initially there back to be dashes. So I have a methyl on this top carbon, and I have an ethyl on this bottom carbon. Okay, and again, plus enantiomer or racemic to indicate that the hydrogens can also come from the bottom face. This is a chiral molecule, so we would have to indicate that its enantiomer is also formed. Okay, in our next example, we're adding HCl across the pi bond. Normally, we would expect to do this with Markovnikov addition, uh, where we want the hydrogen to go to the carbon with more hydrogens, but in this case, neither of the carbons have hydrogens. And remember, the rationale behind Markovnikov's rule is you want to get the most stable carbocation possible, but if I protonate at either position, I'm going to get a tertiary carbocation. So let's take a quick look at that. My two possible carbocations, I can either protonate at the top carbon to give this carbocation, or I could protonate at the bottom carbon to give this carbocation. And notice that they're both tertiary, so they're equally stable. And if I have two equally stable carbocations, I expect them both to be formed. And so they're both going to lead to um, our final, our, our major products, significant projects. So that's the first step in the mechanism. So protonation, we, I, I can show that mechanism here. So we protonate the pi bond with two arrows. And to do proton transfer, it happens with either regiochemistry. 
And so then when the chloride that was formed in our first step comes back as a nucleophile, I can add to either of these carbocations, and we're going to uh, get a mixture of regiochemistries. The other question here is what about the stereochemistry? This is not a stereospecific reaction because the hydrogen is added in one step and the chloride is added in the second step. So in other words, it doesn't happen with only syn addition, where they come from the same face, or only anti-addition, where they come from opposite faces. We're going to get a total mixture of stereochemistry. So in that case, what we should do is we should, we'll just draw them as flat, um, as everything is flat lines. So if the first product would have a chlorine on the bottom carbon and the second product would have a chlorine on the top carbon. Doesn't matter where you draw them, there's no stereochemistry to show. So in other words, uh, this this would have, the, the if we've just focused on the two alkyl groups, the two alkyl groups can be cis to each other, they could be trans to each other, and then of course each of those would have um, the, both enantiomers. So there's four different ways. It says, because it says two chiral centers, there's four different ways you could draw this compound, four different stereoisomers, four different ways you could draw this compound. So in fact, there are eight products. There are eight products, possible products you can draw. And so that's why we're just going to draw them as straight lines because there's no um, significant stereochemistry to indicate. Okay, let's take a look at our next reaction. Here we have um, uh, bromine again. Okay, anytime we have bromine reacting with an alkene, the very first thing that's going to happen is we're going to form a bromonium ion. Okay, but now we have a solvent that is uh, not like carbon tetrachloride that is not going to be involved. Our solvent now is nucleophilic, and that's going to be what attacks the bromonium ion. So if we take a look at what the bromonium ion looks like, I'm going to skip our stereochemistry here just for a second, sorry. I'll add it in. So if we imagine the bromonium ion coming in as a, as a wedge, we are now going to have the water come in as our nucleophile, and the water has to, a decision to make on what which uh, carbon to attack. And uh, what's observed is when I, when I compare these two um, carbons, okay, we see that this carbon, because it is tertiary, it's going to be uh, more electrophilic because uh, the partial positive is uh, is stronger there. It's better there because it is a tertiary partial positive, and so that's where the water is going to attack. So remember, that's unusual for backside attack for SN2. We usually don't want to go to the more sterically hindered carbon, but because this has some SN1 character, because, oops, let's go back to my regular marker, sorry. Because this has some SN1 character due to that positive charge, it's going to actually be attracted to the more uh, substituted carbon. So it's going to attack at the more substituted carbon. This is backside attack. So if I attack this carbon, that's the, car the carbon bromine bond that I break. And again, we're going to see that backside attack, the SN2. We're going to see um, the anti-addition. So when we're done here, the OH is going to be a dash and the BR is going to be a wedge. So we get anti-addition, just like if we had BR2, and the OH and the BR end up trans to each other. So what happens to this methyl group that we had here? This methyl group was a dash, but we get inversion at that site, so um, the OH ends up being a dash, and the methyl group ends up being a wedge. So we could draw that right here. Okay, once again, we've drawn a chiral product, so we can't just have this one product form. It also has to be... Uh, plus it's enantiomer, so maybe we could write that. So plus enantiomer, oops, that's not how you spell enantiomer, that doesn't look good. <laughs> plus enantiomer, there we go. Uh, or you could say racemic, or you could uh, have some other indication that it's going to be a racemic mixture. So in other words, when the first bromine, when bromine first attacks, this bromonium ion could have come from the, could have formed from the bottom face, so the bromines, bro two bromine bonds would be dashes, and then the water would have to attack from in front of the page, and so the OH would end up as uh, the wedge. So ultimately, we want to make sure that we get these two groups anti to each other um, because of that backside attack mechanism. Okay, our next example is a hydroboration oxidation, two steps, hydroboration oxidation. Okay, this is going to give uh, anti-addition, and the 
groups that are going to be added are the components of water. We're going to add an H and an OH. We're going to add a hydrogen and a hydroxyl group. So uh, first we have to figure out what our structure looks like. We have uh, E3-methyl 2-pentene. So let's draw 2-pentene. So there's pentene. And we add a double bond here. And so at carbon 3, we have um, a, a methyl group. 1, 2, 3. This is where a methyl group is. And um, let's check to see if I just accidentally in drawing my first drawing came up with the E stereochemistry. Okay, and uh, in order to figure out if this is E, we look on each carbon. We look at the two groups on each carbon. And the, two, the two groups on this carbon are just a hydrogen and this methyl. So the methyl is the higher priority. On the second carbon, we have a methyl and an ethyl. The ethyl is higher priority. And because the um, highest priority groups are on opposite sides, they're trans to each other, this is in fact this, the E stereochemistry. So I kind of lucked out there. When I uh, when I drew it as a line drawing, if this uh, if I maybe started with the Z, okay, maybe if I or I didn't draw it right the first time, what I would have to do is simply swap two of these groups, right, or either put the methyl group up here instead of down here, and that would be the Z stereochemistry, okay. But we were supposed to start with E, so that's good. So what are we going to do? We're going to add two groups across the pi bond. We're going to add an H and an OH, and we're going to do it with anti uh the Hydrogen goes to the carbon with less hydrogens, so the hydrogen is going to go on the more substituted carbon, the OH is going to go on the less substituted carbon. And we also um, get, oh, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my uh, text here, and I realized that I was saying anti-Markovnikov addition, but I didn't write that. So this is anti-Markovnikov describes the regiochemistry, but the stereochemistry is defined when the hydrogen and the boron add in the first step, and that is syn addition. Syn describes the, regio the stereochemistry they add from the same face. So when we draw our product, when we draw our product, we want to add uh, the H and the OH from the same face. So let's make them both wedges, for example. The wedge bond is up here for a zigzag up. It's down here for a zigzag down. So that would be syn addition, both from the top face. And then what's that going to do to our existing methyl group? If my hydrogen came in from the top face, that's going to push the methyl group back to be a dash. So that would be one way to draw it. The other way to, to draw it would be have the H and the OH um, be the dashes instead. So again, plus enantiomer. Plus enantiomer. Very good. How about our next step? The next example is um, just water and acid. So this is the same as saying H3O plus. Dilute sulfuric acid, and that would um, be hydration conditions. So I'm going to break the pi bond. I'm going to add an H and an OH. And this is uh, starts with protonation of the pi bond. And so we're going to do it in such a way to get the most stable carbocation possible. So we're going to follow Markovnikov's rule. The hydrogen is going to go to the more substituted, the one with more hydrogens. So that the positive charge goes to the carbon with more carbons. We get a tertiary carbocation, and um, and that's what it would attack. So again, just we can point out why this regiochemistry is formed. We get the tertiary carbocation is more stable, and so that's why we added the hydrogen to the carbon that already had more hydrogens. And so water is going to be my nucleophile, and it's going to attack the carbocation, and then we're going to have to deprotonate the water to make it neutral, and uh, we're going to get an OH, a tertiary alcohol. And now again, this is another example where there is no fixed stereochemistry that's of a relationship between the H and the OH that we're adding. Um, but also in this case, we have a symmetrical molecule. We don't have any chiral centers. And so this is just the tertiary alcohol is what we've formed here. Okay, our next example is addition of HBr, but we have a special um, addition here. We've added peroxides. So having that OO bond uh, is described as a peroxide, and that gives a radical mechanism. The radical mechanism is going to cause a bromine atom to add to the pi bond to give the more stable radical intermediate, which is a tertiary radical intermediate. Uh, remember, radicals have the same relative stability as carbocations, so more carbon groups would be better. 
okay? And, and because that is my uh, intermediate, then when the uh, it abstracts a hydrogen atom from HBr, we do a, an atom abstraction, the final product is going to be um, addition of HBr, but when we look at that regiochemistry, we see we would describe it as anti-Markovnikov. Anti-Markovnikov regiochemistry because the hydrogen went to the more substituted carbon and the bromine went to the uh, the carbon with more hydrogens. <clears throat> so this is the, the um, we get the opposite regiochemistry in the presence of peroxides because of this radical mechanism. Uh, no stereochemistry, no specific stereochemistry to show here, again, because the two groups are added in separate steps. There's no um, relevant, uh, no relative stereochemistry to worry about. They're not added only sin to each other, only anti. We're going to get all four possibilities here. Um, we would have, uh, you know, RR, SS, SR, and SR, and SS as our um, four possibilities. Okay, our uh, next example is another case where we have a uh, formation of a bromonium ion, but we have another example of a nucleophilic solvent, a nucleophilic solvent. So that's going to be what adds, what opens up the bromonium ion. And I can show what that bromonium ion looks like. Notice we started with a trans alkene. So those two alkyl groups are still going to be trans to each other in the bromonium ion. And um, so now when I have my methanol attack, it can attack on either side. It would, uh, those would actually lead to our two possible enantiomers. And so it's going to attack on either side. And we're going to have to, again, deprotonate. So when methanol acts as our nucleophile, it is the methoxy group that ends up um, adding to the compound. So we can draw it, if we keep our carbon chain fixed uh, at, with the same stereochemistry to have in the beginning, again, we want to show that anti-addition of the two groups, the bromine and the methoxy group, because this, again, is backside attack. So if we draw the bromine as a wedge, then the methoxy group has to be a dash. The methoxy group has to be a dash. That would be one way to show it. Um, and this is a, a chiral molecule, so we would want to indicate that it's racemic. So again, you could either write racemic, or you could say plus enantiomer. Um, either way uh, indicates that the other possibility is fine too, where the methoxy is the wedge and the bromine is the dash. Okay, and our last two examples are reduction reactions. Um, lithium and ammonia is described as the dissolving metal reduction. And this uh, involves electron transfer by the lithium. This is lithium zero, so it is lithium with a single valence electron, so very highly reactive, very good reducing agent. It wants to donate that electron. And so uh, ultimately what it's going to do is it's going to result in a trans alkene. So I have the isopropyl and the methyl groups are going to be trans to each other, and it, we could show the hydrogens too, the hydrogens that are going to be adding are going to be trans as well. So we'll get the trans alkene when we do a dissolving metal reduction of an alkyne. And this last example is a special uh, type of reaction when we have palladium and barium sulfate and quinoline. This is an example of something that's called Lindlar's catalyst. And it's also described as a poisoned catalyst. And what happens is we don't get complete reduction of the triple bond in this case. We have just partial reduction. So the two, we end up reducing the uh, alkyne to an alkene. But because we, we get the same syn addition observed above for the catalytic hydrogenation, that is going to be reflected when we look at our product. The product is going to have the two hydrogens adding from the same face. And so that means our phenyl group and our methyl group are going to stay um, cis to each other as well. So when we do Lindlar's catalyst reduction of an alkyne, you get the cis alkene. So these are two nice methods. These last two methods are nice complementary methods in synthesis as a way to get either the um, trans or the cis stereochemistry of our product depending on which uh, reduction reaction conditions that you use. These two anti-Markovnikov mean if the hydrogens come in, boop, 